why do Taiwanese people drink warm water a lot? <laughs> As I'm filming this, I'm also drinking warm water right now. I would say it's kind of a general belief in Taiwan that warm water is good for your health and over time it kind of just becomes a habit for me so now if I don't have my warm water, I just feel really uncomfortable. Hey guys, it's yet another video here on YouTube. So today I'm going to continue to answer some more questions from you guys about Taiwan and Taiwanese people from a Taiwanese perspective. So this is a part two of the video. So if you'd like to check out some previous questions I've already answered in part one, you'll be able to find the link in the description. What is your favorite part about Taiwanese culture and are there any overlaps between Taiwanese culture and Chinese culture? Okay, this is how I personally feel. So of course, Taiwan follows for the most part the Chinese culture because after all, we are the Republic of China. But what I really love about what I would call the Taiwanese culture is that it has also been influenced multiple times by many other cultures through our colonial history and the mixed culture we already have on this island so that we are able to inherit the good sides of many. So to give an example, I might as well answer these other questions that I got. Do you actually still find remnants of the former colonial powers in Taiwan? For example, buildings, customs, food, and so on. So we have to know that towards the end of the Japanese colonization in Taiwan, Japan was seriously trying to convert all Taiwanese people into Japanese, following the Japanese culture and their social roles and everything. So it, this definitely has had a strong influence on Taiwanese people on a cultural level as well, not just on the surface like buildings and customs. So for example, in Taiwan, politeness is also considered quite important and also that whole ideology of doing things for the well-being of the group, of the public, not just for yourself. So these are obviously the positive qualities of the Japanese culture, but you know that when you take something too extreme, no matter how positive it is, it can never be good. So for the Japanese culture, it obviously has this dark side of putting too much pressure on yourself and oppressing yourself too much to a point where it's damaging to your mental health. But then in Taiwan, we do have the Chinese culture where people don't always take things too seriously. Like not everything has to be so perfect all the time. So it sort of balanced things out. And that is just one of the examples because of course, even our native cultures is very diverse enough. And I think definitely all of them shape us into what we are today. And I really like that. Another thing is, I guess because we've had our long history of accepting different cultures, nowadays we are more open to accepting new concepts. So to be the first Asian country to legalize gay marriage is certainly one result that comes out of it. Okay, so that answered this question, but now I do want to jump back to this other question because I have some more examples I would like to share with you guys. So definitely, as you said, there are a lot more left from the Japanese colonizations just because the event is rather recent. So you can definitely see the remains of their buildings throughout many places in Taiwan. For example, recently where I went on this trip in the Jiayi city and we found this huge area of this whole village filled with a lot of traditional Japanese buildings left by the Japanese people who used to live there and there are actually a lot of these type of villages throughout Taiwan. I've also been to one in Taipei before but it's not just those villages because uh, even a lot of the infrastructures and public constructions that we still use nowadays are actually planned and built under the Japanese colonization. Another influence Japan left in Taiwan is the language. So in the modern Taiwanese Hokkien that we speak, a lot of the words are actually Japanese words introduced into Taiwan during the Japanese colonization. And also some people from the older generations, for example, my father also does this sometimes that when they answer the phone, they would say moshi moshi, which is the Japanese way of answering the phone. So of course, people from younger generation don't do this anymore. But as I said, I've definitely heard my dad saying this several times when he answered the phone. And even I've heard one of my classmates from high school answering the phone saying moshi moshi as well. So I don't really think there are anything left from the Spanish colonization but when it comes to Dutch colonization, there are actually buildings left in the modern Tainan area. So that was the main city that they used to occupy. So there are definitely buildings left there that were built by the Dutch. So if you ever have a chance to visit the Tainan city, you should definitely check out those buildings. How do Taiwanese people generally feel about the Japanese colonization occupation period? Okay, so I know one thing that surprises a lot of foreigners is how Taiwanese people don't seem to hold grudges against Japan for the colonization. And I'm not even talking about just people like me who have never personally experienced the period, but even for people like my grandparents who have actually experienced the Japanese colonization, I don't think 
they have that much resentment against Japan. So as I've also shared before, even when I was little, my grandmother used to teach me Japanese. So I suppose that's just not something that you do when you hate a country. So from what I've heard, one reason behind this is definitely Taiwan's hate against China. And here I'm actually talking about both the People's Republic of China and the Republic of China. So first, let's talk about the Republic of China. So before the Republic of China came, Taiwanese people actually had high expectations of them. But when they actually came, it definitely broke most Taiwanese people's hopes and dreams. Because for the one thing, from appearance, they definitely looked like a downgrade from the Japanese rulers. And secondly, they were also acting like gangsters, taking things from people's houses by force. And most importantly, they killed a lot of Taiwanese people in the 228 massacre and in the White Horror period following by the massacre. So a lot of the Taiwanese people actually hated the Republic of China so much that they even preferred the Japanese colonization. So during the time, apparently there was the saying that goes Gao Ki Di Lai, which basically means the dogs leave and the pigs come. So the dogs referring to Japanese, they were really cruel, but at least they did contribute a lot to Taiwan. So for example, education and a lot of the infrastructures. But on the other hand, the Republic of China is just like pig. They just eat and take without doing anything for the Taiwanese people. And when it comes to the modern time, of course, we have this huge enemy that is the People's Republic of China and the CCP government. So that is kind of our number one problem. So because of that, we don't really have much more time to to hate on Japan and and plus if we could make friends with Japan we might slightly increase our chance to protect ourselves from the People's Republic of China. So I would say that is the main reason why most Taiwanese people don't really mind the Japanese colonization anymore. How's East China? Well, thanks for asking. I guess we're doing okay for the most part, except for the fact that we're now anxiously waiting to see what China is going to do now, following by Nancy Pelosi's visit. So several of you guys have actually been asking me about this as well. What is your view on House Speaker Nancy Pelosi planning to visit Taiwan next month? What are your opinions on Nancy visit in Taiwan? China warned us if Nancy visits Taiwan, we will shoot down the plane. Will China do it or is just a fake warning? What do you think of Nancy Pelosi coming to visit Taiwan? I'm personally just really concerned to see what China is going to do now. So if you didn't know, Nancy Pelosi is the highest official of the US government to visit Taiwan in 25 years. And now China is super pissed and they have been making warnings, threats, and they have actually already been doing this military drills with live fire in Taiwan Straits. And in these two days, they have been banning a lot of products from Taiwan. So I'm actually really surprised because I also made a poll and asked about your guys' opinions. And apparently a huge percentage of you guys think that this visit is good for Taiwan. So I can definitely see how this might have a positive influence in the long term. But right now we're actually facing this huge threat coming from China already. So I'm definitely just worried about whether China is actually going to do what they said they would do and I really hope you guys are right on this one. What is your opinion on John Kai Shek? Also, how is your parents, grandparents' view on him? And also, how does Taiwanese education treat him? Okay, so I have to be honest because I get these questions a lot as a Taiwanese person, but I don't really have that strong of an opinion on him. So I would say that it's probably because the Taiwanese education treats him from a rather neutral view. So they basically just listed everything he did. So for me, and also especially because I haven't actually experienced Taiwan under his rule, so honestly, for me, he's really just this historical figure that I don't really like or hate. So the same thing goes to Mao Zedong, actually. So both of them, to me, are just historical figures that appear in the history books. Now, when it comes to my grandparents who have experienced Taiwan under Chiang Kai-shek's rule, they absolutely hate him, which is, of course, quite understandable because they were the direct victim of the 228 massacre and also the White Horror period. So when it comes to my parents who 
are kind of in between. They don't really hate Drunk Eye Shake as much as their parents, even though they have heard stories from their parents. But also, they think that there are certain things he did that actually benefit Taiwan even till today. So one thing my father said specifically was that he really appreciates how Drunk Eye Shake was able to keep communism out of Taiwan. So they definitely do not agree with the cruel things he did to the people, like the massacres and stuff like that. But on the other hand, they also think that the good things he did for Taiwan cannot be denied. What do you think will be the strangest thing for a foreigner when they step for the first time on Taiwan? Okay, so the humidity thing that I mentioned in the first part of the video. And also, I have heard many foreigners commenting on how they find it impressive that in Taiwan, for example, if you leave your car keys with your motorbikes, nobody is going to take your car. And also, if you accidentally drop your wallet on the street or maybe out in the public, nobody is going to take that. So you can literally just get back to the same spot and you will be able to find your wallet after hours. So that's definitely pretty cool, I guess. Is Taiwan friendly to foreign tourists? Yeah, I do think so. Like, I've always heard Taiwanese people having this reputation of being quite friendly towards foreigners and foreign tourists in general. Are there any rules that people from overseas might not know about? Okay, let me think of one. So, okay, so if you happen to be invited to have a meal with a family in Taiwan, we do have this rule that usually you have to wait until the oldest person in the house to sit before everybody else can sit, and you have to wait for the oldest person to start eating before everybody else starts eating. So I don't think they would mind that much if foreigners break this rule, but also it's, I guess it's just something you could look out for if you're ever invited to a family in Taiwan to have a meal with them. And this other thing is not really a rule, but I would say if you're visiting Taiwan, definitely look out for the cars because cars in Taiwan will not wait for pedestrians. They will just literally come in full speed right in front of you. And it's quite scary if you're not used to it. It could definitely be quite dangerous, so definitely look out for the cars. Other than that, I really hope you and your sister will have a wonderful trip in Taiwan. If it's possible for the ROC to reunify the mainland, would the Taiwanese people take that instead of being recognized as an independent island nation in a heartbeat? Okay, so I did check with the person asking this question to make sure that they meant Taiwan to be reunified with mainland but under the ROC rule. So to answer this question, I would say that probably more Taiwanese people would just want independent instead of a reunification but under the ROC rule. And I say this because if you guys remember, I made a video on my reaction to the West Taiwan Ming. And so that I know that there are actually a group of Taiwanese people that have come out and say that they don't like the West Taiwan Ming because it kind of promotes this narrative that Taiwan and mainland should be unified but under the ROC rule. So, so they're still against this. They want to be recognized independent instead of reunified whether or not it's ruled by the PRC or ROC. And so I would assume that probably most Taiwanese people nowadays would just like to be recognized as an independent country country instead of re reunifying with anyone. So, and when it comes to my personal opinion, uh, first of all, I don't really think that ROC is capable of ruling the whole mainland. Like mainland is just so much bigger than Taiwan. I don't know how they're going to do it. And also secondly, for ROC to take over the mainland, it definitely still requires invasion. And you know how much I'm against invasion, whether it's the PRC or the ROC to initiate it. I really don't want any of that. I just hope that people from the both sides could live peacefully and happily. Is the Republic of China, aka Taiwan, a cheap country, affordable or expensive? I would definitely say affordable. So somewhere in between other Southeast Asian countries and West Europe, North America. How has the global rise in prices affected your usual groceries in Taiwan? Okay, yeah, so Taiwan definitely has also been strongly affected by this. And the first noticeable item was actually eggs. So around the beginning of this year, suddenly the price of the eggs just skyrocketed and everybody was there to buy eggs. And it was so difficult to find grocery stores that still have stock on eggs. And even if you do find one, those are way more expensive than usual. And following by that, basically every everything has just becoming more and more expensive and because the raw materials are becoming more expensive the price in the restaurants are also rising like crazy and even like this language school that I go to they have also been rising their tuition fees so it's really crazy what are some of your favorite Taiwanese names my favorite Taiwanese name has to be Guiyu which means salmon 
Okay, that was a reference to the time where many Taiwanese people changed their name into the Chinese word for salmon to get free sushi from this chain sushi restaurant. I personally just find that event super funny. What are some of your favorite countries? My favorite countries are the countries you guys are from. So sometimes I would receive these comments from you guys saying hi from this country, greetings from that country, and I always love receiving these type of comments, and when I see that, I definitely think that these are my favorite countries right now. Only one question, why China hates Taiwan? Okay, I think China hates Taiwan because so far, Taiwan doesn't seem to want to reunify with them. And also, Taiwan wants to keep its democracy and freedom, basically all of the values that the PRC are against. And also the fact that Taiwan is right in the middle of the first chain island the, the US is actively using to contain China's influence and power within. So I guess that's why China hates Taiwan so much. Is it true that banking is a slow process in Taiwan? I want to say yes, but then again, I've also been to banks in several other countries, and to be honest, I haven't noticed a significant difference in the time I will be waiting in a bank. Thoughts on the old and new Taipei city flags? Well, I didn't even know there was an old one, so let's check it out then. Well, I definitely prefer the new one then, I would say. Do you have any records on your ancestry? Sadly, no. And the reason is that actually in early Taiwan, it was really common for poor family who couldn't afford to raise so many children to give away some of the children to other family who wanted kids but couldn't have kids. So it just so happened that both sides of my grandfathers were adopted. And so they had to change their family name to the new family as well, which is why I don't really have that much records on my ancestry. What is your favorite place to visit in Taiwan? Maybe for a holiday or something. Okay, I would definitely say the Tainan city for its street food and the historical buildings. And I actually don't understand because so many people are saying that the foods in Tainan are too sweet. And it's kind of an inside joke where Taiwanese people would make fun of people in Tainan for eating too sweet. But when I was actually there, when I was trying out the street foods, I didn't really get that impression and I actually really liked it. So I don't know, maybe I just have a also have a sweeter taste, I don't know. What makes you really passionate about learning multiple languages? Because I've been trying to learn a new foreign language that isn't using Latin type of alphabet, for example, Japanese and or Mandarin. And I find it really tough so far. Maybe any tips or tricks on how you do it yourself. Okay, so based on what you rolled, if your biggest struggle is memorizing and or recognizing these alphabets that are not Latin based, maybe I can share with you this tip that I learned from my first ever Japanese teacher. So when you start learning Japanese, usually the most standard way would be for you to just memorize all of the hiragana, like all 50 of them by heart. And I used to try to learn a bit Japanese by myself, but I'm already stuck at this first step because it was just so difficult to just memorize all of them by heart. But then I went to this Japanese class and the teacher had a very different way of teaching us this hiragana. I have even been to other Japanese class where the teacher would just quickly go through all of the hiragana in the first class and just ask us to memorize them on our own after class. But this teacher that I met had a very unique ways of teaching us the hiragana. So she didn't actually go through them one by one in order, but she started chatting with us. And through the chat, she started to throw out some random Japanese word at us and then through these words she listed out the hiragana that spelled those words and then started teaching us those hiragana first. So for example, the first word she taught us was yasumi. So then she started teaching us the hiragana ya and su and mi that makes up this word. And so the first goal of that class for us is to remember these three, just three hiraganas, ya and su and mi. And I just find it so much easier to remember it this way because for example, you would always memorize one hiragana and, and later you see it, you forget about it again. But because I remember these hiragana previously with with these words, right? So now if I see one that I don't remember, I, I could always just search back to my memory and I would remember that, okay, this hiragana is me from the word yasumi that I already know. And it's just so much easier to remember it this way. And then once I've learned this method, I could also use that on my own because I really love watching anime. So I would already know a lot of their the characters' names and also even some few words in Japanese already that I already know. And so 
I would just take these Japanese words that I already know and I would look up their hiragana and I would just start by memorizing these hiragana with along with the words. And by learning this hiragana through a word I already know, it really really helps me because for example, there was a time I had a difficult time telling the difference between lu and lo because they look very similar. But then back then I do know this word kokoro. So I learned the hiragana ko and lo from this word. So every time I would see a hiragana that I'm not sure if it's do or lo, I would just I would just think back to this kokoro that I know. And if it looks the same as the lo in kokoro, then I know it's lo, not do. And if it looks different, then it's do. And on top of that, because you were also asking about how to keep being passionate, so to keep the learning process fun is obviously also one of the ways. And I could just tell you that this way of memorizing the alphabet is just 100 times more fun than if you were to memorize it by heart. Because when it comes to anything, memorizing by heart is never fun. But when you're memorizing it through these words that you already know, it's just way more fun because you get to learn a lot of interesting words and also memorize the hiragana at the same time. So yeah, that was basically a tip that I really love and I hope it was helpful. I don't know if you already know about this, if you're already using it and you still feel demotivated. If that is the case though, I would say probably just give up on reading. <laughs> I mean, I'm not even joking, like I know so many foreigners, they would just learn Mandarin, but they would only learn how to speak, like they would learn how to have a conversation with native speakers, but they never learn how to write and read, because technically, as long as you can learn how to speak and have a conversation with people, you don't really need to learn how to read, be able to read, and if that is the biggest problem that you have, like, you know, in Mandarin, we have the, the characters, they are just really, really difficult even for native speakers to learn and also this system of characters also exists in Japanese like the kanji are you are also these Chinese characters so if you just find that way too difficult definitely maybe consider just learn how to speak and because when you learn how to speak you don't even have to use the alphabets that are not latin based because you are actually able to use the latin alphabets to spell out the pronunciations in both Japanese and Mandarin so if you do that you could also just just, just use these Latin alphabets to learn how to speak. And as you become more and more fluent in a language, maybe you will start becoming more interested in learning how to read, and then you can always just start from scratch from there. So finally, I definitely need to talk about this question that I actually got, which you can read from the thumbnail. So I saw this question in my notification. Originally, I wasn't going to pay any attention to it because I know that whoever is making this question, maybe they're just joking, but it is also likely that they were actually coming off with a hateful intention. So I just removed it from my notification, ready to forget about it. But then it just came to my mind that, you know what, that would actually make sense such a good thumbnail. <laughs> So that's what I did, and it seems like you guys agree with me as well, so I'm glad that it could at least serve as a type of entertainment. And now even though I want to go back to the post and find the comments, unfortunately I wasn't able to find it. Maybe it has already been removed by the YouTube system. But anyway, just putting it out there to let you guys know that that was one of the weirdest questions that I got. Okay, so I'm going to leave it here for this video. Again, thank you guys so so much for all of your questions, and thank you for all of your birthday wishes as well. Please leave a like and subscribe for more Taiwan related content and more QA videos like this one. And I will see you in the next video.